And then uh, moving into DOS attacks, um, uh, once again, DOS, is, a DOS attack is a denial of service. It's an attempt to you know, take down a network or uh, prevent uh, access to at least a particular network service. Um, a distributed DOS is when you've got, usually this is the, the case where you've got a, a bunch of these little zombie or slaves, a botnet of computers where um, some hacker has control of this army of systems that they can use to just all send a flood of traffic toward a, a particular system to try to bring it down. Um, a lot of viruses that people get that don't seem to do anything um, may actually be a botnet virus where you're, you're, you may not be doing anything inherently harmful to your own system by having that virus on there, but a hacker is able to use your system um, to basically do what he wants as far as like sending data. And so it may be something as, I, don't, I wouldn't say innocuous as that, but uh, you know, just where it's only affecting other people, but you're still, you've got a virus on there. So there are these botnets that have millions of computers on them that uh, you know people use for DDoS attacks, people use for, for spam networks, that kind of thing. And this is a perfect example where you've got you know your hacker there he's got a couple of uh, servers or clients that he's controlling and then each of those uh, has sets of computers that have this virus on it that they can use to just basically send pings uh, really large pings uh, so that all of the network traffic to you know for the WAN of this particular server is taken over so that you really wouldn't be able to do anything uh, another type of DOS attack is the, uh, the TCP SYN attack um, TCP sessions, um, you know, TCP, going back uh, to, to last class, TCP is a, a session-oriented uh, type of connection, layer 4 connection, UDP being the other type of layer 4 connection where it's, it's connectionless. So on UDP, you're just sending traffic. You're not worried about getting responses back. You know, if it, if it gets there, it gets there. Hopefully it does. If not, you're not a whole, really worried about it. TCP sessions, um, they require this three-way handshake because you're worried. You, you have to make sure that the traffic's getting there and it's, it's coming back to you and you're getting acknowledgments. So whenever uh, a client uh, tries to start a, a TCP a session with a, a server or another client, they'll, they have this three-way handshake where the client initially sends a SYN packet, uh, S-Y-N, and then if the server on the other end uh, gets that, it sends back an acknowledgement packet known as a SYNAC, uh, so acknowledging that it received the SYN packet, um, SYN being sync. And then if the, if the client receives that acknowledgement packet, it sends a last acknowledgement packet known as an ACK packet back to the server, and then at that point uh, the, the session, the TCP session between the two devices is open. Um, the TCP SYN attack uh, DOSes this by sending a flood of SYN packets from a spoofed IP address. A spoofed IP address being an IP address that, um, you know, it's, it's basically taken over. It's not like the, a legitimate IP address. It's one that the, the server would accept as a valid client. So it, from a spoofed IP address, it just sends this flood of SYN packets, and it never sends the SYN ACK back. Well, the server's got a certain a queue in its system where it can only accept a certain number of SYN packets. So let's say it can only take, you know, 100 or 200 um, TCP sessions at a time. Well, if it, if it never gets a response back from the SYN ACK packets that it's sending to this flood of SYN packets, then it, it never fully initiates fully initiates those TCP sessions, but it also doesn't allow legitimate clients to um, create a TCP session to that server because the queues are completely filled up with these these SYN packets. Um, so that's that's basically like how a, a TCP SYN attack works. Um, and there, you can actually, um, I, I think at the end of this chapter they get into some ways to uh, get rid of that or to avoid that at least, but that's that's pretty much about how it works. Um, and if eventually the, the TCP sessions will um, will terminate on their own, like they'll, they'll have a certain timeout, but either you'll, you'll go through that period of time where no users will be able to, um, to access it until that, those timeouts occur, or they'll just keep sending the SYN, the SYN packets, you know, in, uh, indefinitely, and so you would never ever have like enough of a timeout that uh, legitimate users would be able to access that network service. And then uh, the best named DOS attack is the, the Smurf attack. Um, it's uh, where they send multiple broadcast ping requests or sent to a target with, from a spoofed IP address. Um, we talked about the spoofed IP address. These are actually uh, oh. easily, um, easily combated. You guys may have seen in a Cisco router this line, no IP directed broadcast. 
Um, that means that you can't, you know, a broadcast, like we were talking on the Layer 2 broadcast, uh, a broadcast on Layer 3 is to, you know, the 255, 255, 255, 255. This is basically saying that that has to come from a, a node directly attached. Uh, you can't, you know, direct this so, uh, broadcast over Layer 3 to get there, so the spoof, to, the spoof thing would not work as long as you've got that command in your Cisco router. The... Um, a lot of people ask why it's called a Smurf attack. That's just the name of the program. Um, I think it was late '80s or early '90s when they they came up with this. Uh, the Smurf attack was the Smurf was the name of the program that they used to initiate that. There's another um, very very similar one called the I think it was called Fraggle. So you've got the Smurf attack and the Fraggle attack. All of your '80s cartoons all in one place. To attack. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're attacking him. Who are the blue guys? Smurfs. Those are Smurfs. I was hoping you weren't serious. <laughs> Those are Teletubbies. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so um, <coughs> so those are those are the types of network attacks. Now we'll get a little bit uh, just on a general level of mitigating those network attacks. Um, the the main the main opportunities to do that are uh, AAA uh, ACLs. Cisco IOS secure management features, encryption protocols, and security appliances and applications. And going more in depth on each of the individual ones, uh, AAA <coughs> is authentication, uh, authorization, and accounting. Um, you know that's, and each of these are kind of outlined for you here. Authentication uh, basically identifies users by a login and password. So you can't get into a router without, or you know, a server or otherwise. You can't get into it without having a login, username, and password. If it's completely open, then the, the network or whatever that service is is completely open. Um, authorization determines what a user is allowed to do. So, uh, like in a a Cisco, you guys will know that um, you know there's different levels of um, the the iOS where you can get into where you've just got like the little greater than symbol. You can't do anything. You can get into enable mode. You can get into a privileged exec mode, and you can do more stuff. And then in addition to that, they they've got authorization levels where they can actually um, you know, based on your username and password or attack axe credentials, they can set like what uh, passwords or what um, commands you're allowed to to enter into the router. And so that's what authorization is. Is you know, it, from a network level, you may not want um, you know us not being able to like reboot red bags and stuff like that. That's that's a perfect example. Um, you don't want you know your lower level techs able to completely bring down network services but you still have to give them some kind of access so that they can you know do their do whatever job you've got them doing on the network without um, basically being in god mode and then accounting um, is uh, logging essentially assembles and sends usage information so you know anything you do on any of the the main core routers in our network it's all set up to go to a syslog server so if they find out that someone for whatever reason did have access to reboot a router that they shouldn't have and it got rebooted um, they could go <laughs> back in and check the syslog and see who had done that so that uh, that sums up authentication authorization and accounting and man you can go really really far into this stuff especially if you go into the um, the CCNA security, CCNP security um, set. And then uh, <coughs> Cisco ACLs, access control lists. Um, a lot of you guys should be familiar with this. We actually go really, or not really far, but pretty far in depth on ACLs in Chapter 19 way later, you know, how to, how to configure them, how they work, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of times they're, they're set up uh, to deliver, or to filter out the following, IP spoofing, um, you know, TCP sent attacks, Smurf attacks, which uh, we also sh you know, showed could be redirected with a no IP directed broadcast, and then the ICMP and trace route can also be blocked out um, so that your you know ping sweeps and port scans may not be so successful. 